Hi, welcome back to Sector One, the first stop you should make for your motorsports facts. I'm Rhiannon and I'm joined by Mary today. Sid is on holiday in Mexico, not that we're jealous of it or anything <laughs> like that. Um, so it's just us today, but yeah. So we're going to be talking about all the drama that's been going on at Red Bull at the moment. Um, I thought we had enough of the British Grand Prix, but apparently on Tuesday they wanted to spice it up a little bit more. Um, so obviously we've had the news of Ricardo replacing Nick de Vries at Alpha Tauri. Um, so Rhiannon, do you want to just sort of give your view on that to start with? Like, what do you think? Is it the right decision? I mean, I don't even know where you start with this sort of thing. Like, I don't think anyone, right, I would say we all kind of saw it coming, but not this early. I th- I at least thought that, right, okay, maybe they're going to give it the season because I also think it's like, well... Yeah, it, it wasn't performing and Yuki was outperforming him, but Yuki wasn't outperforming him enough that it's like points every week and it's like really affecting them in the championship because in, in all honesty, the car has been sort of the slowest on the grid this year. and The car hasn't been that good that they've been scoring consistent points all the time and that it's really going to have that much of an effect on the championship. I think it'd be different had they, had they been missing out on valuable points sort of every single week. Um, but that hasn't been the case and I thought at least the summer break if not the whole season give them the summer break yeah What's your I thought? feel that I feel that we always used to hear loads of like crazy rumors about stuff even now I'm seeing things like Charlotte Claire to Red Bull and like stuff like that and I feel like whenever it's anything surrounding Red Bull it then actually happens and every single time I'm so shocked and I'm like oh my god this feels like fake news Because it's one of those things that you're like, oh, it's silly season, just rumours. But Red Bull always deliver on it. Somehow they always do something to sort of like spice it up. But yeah, I think it's a really tough like decision to make. And I think the main thing that gets me is the way that they announced it. It's sort of, it was sort of like a celebration of Ricardo, and no one really said much about Nick. It was very much, yay, Daniel's back. And like no one even said like oh you know like thank you Nick or anything to do with his performance whatsoever it was very much a, like oh how can we get Ricardo back in as soon as possible and we'll just sacrifice this other driver so it's a really is to be honest it's a tough decision because Red Bull are in such a good position where they have like two teams no other team really has that where they can trial drivers to then move to their first team that's normally what happens in formula two so Uh I think it's it's such a weird situation and I feel like I've got more a bias towards Nick because I watch formula e and I literally adored him when he was in that and now I feel really bad for him but yeah it's it's a bit crazy but I think there are definitely things that are good about having Ricardo in Mm mm-hmm no, for sure. I, I get what you're saying. Like, Red Bull, they don't even believe in silly season because silly season's just like every race weekend for them <laughs> at this point. It's like, we don't need to wait until the summer break to start, like, to kick off. We'll just do it. Ha- yeah. Not even halfway through the season, really. But I, I feel like they took the opportunity. I feel like if it was any other driver that wasn't Daniel, they would have, like, been announced it in a different way but I think it's like they just really wanted that pressure of Daniel Ricardo because he's that driver everyone likes Daniel Ricardo so it's like this is like huge news we've got Daniel in the card and just kind of like you said didn't didn't announce like Nick's departure like thank you like when Pierre Gasly left um that wasn't even like halfway through a season when he left and came out of his contract they initially put the post up going Pierre's gonna leave we really thank him for his time his effort everything with the team and then waited an hour to then announce Nick De Vries as a replacement and it's like well he, he was owed that courtesy because we do have to remember he's a rookie driver he's not he's not like uh, done a couple of seasons where it was like uh, Daniel Kvyat when he got when he got demoted, it wasn't like he had really had that time to try and find his feet, and he, he wasn't able to do that. He's had a couple of races where he's not he's not been in like a true Formula car in a couple of like a good couple of years. So obviously, yeah. he had his his drive at Williams, but like even compared to an F V car, I don't know the the stats on them, 
but they're I assume they're nothing like driving a formula car because I mean at first they've got they've got fuel so <laughs> yeah <laughs> um, they've, he's not even like had that time to even just switch on the back into the car that he's got and, and you could argue he's an F1 driver if he doesn't he shouldn't need it but it's, it's, it feels a bit cool <laughs> yeah I feel like because he's a much old I say much older driver he's like what 28 29 or something but uh-huh. people see him as an older driver so they think oh he should be able to just jump in the car but I think people forget even when like Daniel Ricciardo was at McLaren they sort of said oh he needs time to adjust to the car and that was when he was an established race winner and there's people who've moved teams and they take a while to get used to the car so for them to not even give Nick time to get used to it let alone that being his first ever season if he was coming from a different team then maybe but because it, he's had to adjust to not just that specific car but to F1 as a whole it's crazy to expect that when you give so much leeway to other drivers who have more experience like Ricardo and Perez and people give them way more time of day and leeway with stuff like that because they go oh but they'll get there eventually because we know they've done it before we have no history on Nick we have no idea it could have been in the next couple races he could have found his feet or like you never know it this like basically nothing the the time they've given him and like you said especially as the fact that he hasn't actually been in this type of race car in so long I think he won the F2 championship in 2019 and that's that was a while ago that's like pre-covid everything so even if he has had time in the simulator and things is nothing compared to being out there on track and I think the comparison people made as to why they've put Ricardo in about the lap times at Silverstone is that first of all he's driving a Red Bull which is the quickest car on the grid by so much and also he set those times I don't know whether it was front row I know people have been saying that but other people have said oh it was only eighth fastest so I don't actually I have no idea what it really was but he set those times in a Red Bull with basically a clear track, completely different conditions, and it's nothing like driving an Alpha Tauri, I'm assuming. So it's a really hard comparison to make because what if you put Nick De Vries in the Red Bull? What well, he he might do something similar, like you just don't know. So it's such a tough thing to do. And I feel like I sort of know why Red Bull are doing it, because they're trying to I think it might be a bit of a Paris thing where they're saying, right, we kind of want to get a second driver. We want a second driver for Red Bull. So let's just try a few out in Alpha Tauri. So they're just rotating them in, trying to find the best one for now. So it's sort of sad they're in a way sacrificing people's careers. Alpha Tauri is just sort of like a holding team ready for Red Bull. They're not seeing it as its own team, which, yeah, I guess is a little bit sad for those drivers. I completely agree. I I think it's more of a message to Checo Perez than it is to to Nick himself because I'm just I was just even thinking there like Yuki Sonoda had a good tough couple of races, um to the point where Helmut Marko moved them from Milton Keynes uh, down to Italy to set him up and give him a better sort of structure, more training, better diet, and so that they that he's closer to the fact that he's closer to everyone and it's like he gave him that opportunity but hasn't even like tried to give Nick that or but I mean we don't know what goes on behind the scenes however it doesn't it doesn't sound like that sort of way that's gone but if I was Nick right now I would like I think it was just because there was so much expectation of him that like, he came into that Williams seat last year he scored points, he held everyone off and like he got out the car mm-hmm. and he couldn't even walk so we knew by the end of that race he was so fatigued uh, and he was still managing to put in that sort of performance and I think it's a bit like it's, I mean you can't compare it but it's a wee bit like Emma Raducanu the girl that won the tennis Grand Slam when uh, mm-hmm. when she was basically a no one that's how I look at it compared to Nick DeVries, she came in, she had a performance out of nowhere and she's sort of not, she's not lived up to that performance since. And it's like, like she'll say in interviews, she'll say, I wish I didn't win that. I wish that that didn't happen because it's just led to more scrutiny and more, like more expectation of her when right now that is not how great in her career that she is. And I think Nick might be thinking the same sort of thing. Like if he got the F1 seat without that, that sort of performance, would he be sacked after 
how many is this like round 10 or something with that yeah like it's something ridiculous like that I just think that there was so much expectation and he's not lived up to the expectation and that's why he's been sacked so early instead of giving him the chance that everyone else has yeah it's such like a cutthroat sport in terms of I think the Red Bull guys it is purely a business a lot of the time to them so they're just sort of seeing how can we make everyone faster get a better driver and that's all they care about because I think if Nick hadn't got the F1 seat he would probably have got some sort of seat in Formula E continued there but realistically now he's going to have to try and re-enter a series somewhere else or his best option in F1 is to become a reserve driver again and I think once you've been a racing driver he probably doesn't want to be doing that since he's been doing it for so long waiting for a seat and it breaks my heart to I was looking on his Instagram and like his pinned post is the one where he got announced for Alpha Tauri and it it just makes me uh-huh. so sad because he's so grateful and he was so happy and I feel that he's probably seeing everything on social media of how excited everybody is about Daniel mm-hmm. um and it's probably just not nice to hear anyway people so excited that you've been sacked and replaced by somebody else but I think it'll be interesting to see the performance between Daniel and Yuki because obviously that car is not very good. Um, I think what they've only got like two points this season and they were both Yuki sort of on the edge of the top 10. So it's going to be very interesting to see if Daniel can do anything better than that. I think Red Bull are hoping that he'll outperform Yuki, but obviously Daniel's had a, whole, a year, well not a year, like 10 races out of the car. So even though he's been on the simulator and stuff, it is completely different. And we know he's been Red Bull's reserve driver, but I don't know whether that necessarily means he does stuff for Alpha Tauri as well. It might just be specifically Red Bull that he's been doing stuff for that car, not the other car. So yeah, it's such a difficult topic because people are bringing up Liam Lawson and that maybe he should be put in because there's so many rookie drivers and it's sort of like, they're there to bring up new talent, but what they've done is got a younger-ish driver in and gone, oh, you're not good enough, so we'll replace you with a more experienced one. But the point of the younger team is for younger drivers. And then Red Bull's the one you go to when you've got more experience. So it just, it feels a bit wrong. This I feel like every year we sort of talk about how the Red Bull Junior program doesn't work sometimes. But I guess the thing they do well is that if you're good enough you stay if you're not you go and it makes it so that they get the best drivers um but yeah I think it's it's also definitely down to the fact that Max Verstappen was the literally one of the best rookies ever that they've gone none of you are as good as Max so we're just gonna keep <laughs> going until we find another one do you know it's giving dance mums vibes like Maddie's on the yeah. top no one can, <laughs> no one can outperform her um if you do you're like you're mm-hmm. out basically you know it's given that but I think it's exactly what he says Red Bull's all about like it's just a marketing scheme I mean down to how they get their money I, I read this last year that Red Bull's Red Bull Racing's money comes out of like Red Bull the company's marketing like budget it's it's not even a mm-hmm. separate budget it comes out of their marketing budget because it's crazy that's what it is and I think putting one of probably Formula One's most marketable people in the car is only going to get you more sponsors, uh, more airtime, more media, more press, everything that and this is where Red Bull want and what they're after as well. Um, but like you said, Liam Lawson, I, I genuinely believe that he's good enough for the sport. I think that he's definitely ready for that F1 seat. I mean, he's performing, from what I know, he's performing really well in Super Formula over in is it Japan um and he's I mean he's proved himself everywhere maybe in Formula 2 he didn't have the best uh backing in terms of his team to get a performance that was going to be championship worthy but I mean he's fast with some the last couple of years just continue to improve and perform but I just don't think it would have been viable to put him in in the seat halfway through this season I think it's one thing having a rookie join the team but then it's another thing having a rookie join the team halfway through a season not even like we've got one week until the next race yeah it's it's a very very quick turnaround I think Daniel's probably just 
I say the best option, the best option, but then again, what is going to happen next year? Because this isn't just a, this isn't a long-term solution. This is a, mm-hmm. let's get to the end of the season and then see what happens. And I guess it is a test. Can they put them in the Red Bull car? Because it's less of a way of them to go. It's a less of a risk for them to replace, say, Checo come next season. Yeah. And then, but then what happens to Checo? Does Checo go to Alpha Tauri? Or do we just like scrap that and have young drivers in? Or like what actually happens? Yeah, it is honestly it's crazy. I could not predict who they're gonna put in whatsoever. Because obviously the longer you leave Liam Lawson out, the less like the less time he's gonna have between driving those sorts of cars and he needs to get in quick if he's gonna do it. And then you've got all mm. the drivers in Formula Two, like Iwasa, everyone's talking about him and like it's just crazy. They've got so many good drivers and I can see it is probably a bit of a headache for Christian Horner and Helmut Marco because they've got so many talents and they're like, what the hell do we do? It's almost like they need a third team to put drivers in because it's just impossible with four seats with what they're doing. But I think especially with when they rotated like Pierre Gasly and Alex Albon through, they often, they obviously didn't give them enough time because once they move once Pierre moved back to Alpha Tauri he got his win and Alex has been through like all the way back through the teams back to Williams and now he's doing amazingly so it's probably a lot of the the Red Bull pressure but also they need that first year or year and a half to get used to the car and then we see them perform really well and unless you have an amazing car in your first year it's just it's not going to be like that it's not going to be like when Lewis joined at McLaren, that was very unlikely that it's going to happen to you as a rookie because they put the rookies in, not the top teams, deliberately because they're probably knowing they might have a crash or they need to just get used to driving a Formula One car. And obviously it's higher stakes if you put them straight into the top team because you're fighting for wins and championships. So, yeah, I think because I know, because we've seen what's happened to Pierre and, um, and Alex, I feel like Nick something could have come of his um of his career if they just left him a little bit um because i don't know i can't remember how how many years has yuki been in it like is this his third year or second 2021 so this is his third season of the team yeah and i didn't i literally feel like he joined like last year so he's had quite Uh a while but obviously he's had the honda backing with him Mm-hmm, which has meant that he's had that time really yeah but I feel like especially mid-season the rookies need some sort of support in these few races where they're struggling because I feel that as soon as they get over that they seem to perform quite well uh-huh. so it's like how he's, the, the high of being the F1 driver is starting yeah. to wade off and that adrenaline in the car and it's like now's where it's it's getting tough but did you see what happened the other day there, I think it was Christian was interviewed and they were talking about replacements for the mm-hmm. Vries before he had actually properly been sacked. And then he goes, oh, well, Alex is tied up until 25. And I was like, no way. I mean, you just said that you want one of the drivers that you... Like, you... He was talking about replacing <laughs> Checo and he was talking and he was like, oh, well, Alex is tied up. And I was like, well, you actually already sacked Alex. So like, no, they're going to drag him back not, into the programme so again. But I know it's crazy. I think it's because they what happens is they they have drivers at Red Bull and then the drivers leave, go to different teams, perform amazingly, and they go, "Oh, we want them back." As soon as they bring them back, something just happens. I don't know what it is because Alex is having having such a good time at Williams. I don't know whether it's because obviously James Vowles is there now, but he's probably able to have a lot of input in the car and things, and it's sort of a team built around him at Williams now. So. I feel like that's probably why he's doing really well. And like Pierre, when he went back to Alpha Tauri, that's sort of what it was like. But as soon as you put them in a Red Bull, there is no way. Even P- Perez can't do anything about Max because exactly. the team Max. is Max's. And if they're thinking about replacing somebody, yes, Ricardo's the only person who's beaten Max re- sort of recently, but that was like pre-COVID, like 18-year-old Max Verstappen, not double world champion wins every race max so even though we know Daniel can do it it's a big ask given that Checo's been in that Red Bull and he knows everything to do with that team and he's been racing them for the last two years 
if you swap in Ricardo, realistically, I don't know what would happen if they did that next year. But equally, if Ricardo didn't do well at Alpha Tari, do you think they would just drop him again? Like, I feel that they can't just move him back into reserve is. driver. I really see if he isn't performing, I think the last thing that they're going to do is stack him because I just like he could be like dead last. I mean, not that he is going to be, but like mm. he could potentially be dead last. And I still don't even think they'd replace him. I think they, they're they going to have a completely different type of patience there. But like I say, I don't even think like he's a really good driver. We know that he's established, he's a race winner. He probably at one point at least had the potential to be a, a world champion back in his Red Bull 2018, 17, 16 sort of thing. Like he, he has he's he showed the potential, but like I think if he was dead last, he's not there to be a driver in the nicest way. Like I think that scene with not even a mid season replacement mm-hmm. for him, he's there. And he he'll probably know I'd be but himself, he's there to be a media that I to, like yeah. for publicity in the nicest way and they said that when they moved back to Red Bull he says that he's not there to be a, a reserve driver he's not he's not really there to to do many reserve driver roles he knows what he has to offer in terms of popularity bringing bringing better sort of better media to the team he, he knows that that's where he's valuable especially when he's not in a race seat so I think it's I think even if he was performing the same as Nick DeVries, that it wouldn't be an issue. Yeah, I feel like the amount of marketing and PR stuff he brings could probably fund a third Red Bull team, to be fair. so <laughs> For sure, honestly. So, yeah, and I think it, it brings so many more fans. Like Even Christian was on the stage at Silverstone and even he got cheers met by even mentioning Daniel. It's just yeah, sort of like everyone could boo him, but as soon as cheers. he said Daniel... They're like, yeah, we love you. Like, please bring him back. So it is quite a smart move from them to do that. But I've seen a lot of unhappy people about, I think more unhappy people than Red Bull maybe thought they would be with the decision. Yeah. Um, And I'm really interested to see what they do, what Nick does now. Because he was sort of affiliated with Mercedes, but obviously I don't know how much they cut ties with that when he went to Alpha Tauri whether he's still in contact with them because he was their reserve driver before and obviously they're the team he drove for in Formula E. So uh, it'll be interesting I to see where he goes. I think he's got good ties there, to be fair, because, I mean, like, we saw he sat down for lunch with Toto yesterday, yeah. which, I mean, yeah. Toto's at this point, like, the face of Mercedes everywhere. So it's mm-hmm. like, they're obviously still quite friendly, but I also don't know, is Toto his manager? I'm I'm not sure because I know he's Ocon's manager, so (laughs) I don't really know. But I think he'll because he left on such good terms with them that like even if he didn't have many ties, it'll just rebuild them sort of thing. But yeah, I can see him just taking the rest of the season. We've not heard from him yet. I've I have been checking social media every (laughs) single day. I was it he took Formula One driver out his bio and I was like Yeah done that in the last (laughs) ten minutes. I've been seeing what's going on because he's still got his post pinned. Like, I assume mm-hmm. at one point he's going to put something out and say, like, if I'm honest, I think it's going to say that he knows that he wasn't performing, but he thinks it's been cruel what's happened to him. Which I feel like it's going to be a sort of, wrong. like, Oscar Piastri tweet sort of vibe from him. I feel like it's going to be very much uh-huh. like, I understand, but I'm not happy. Or, like, mm-hmm. or something like that. Because I, I saw something that was like, oh he only found out when they were doing it or like an hour before they did it it's like how can you not tell a driver because obviously saw Daniel's times and went yeah we want him and that was it all they needed was that little bit to go See, yes I we want him be more calculated than that I mm-hmm. think like but I'm not being funny you can't put someone in a car and then two laps later go oh my god this is gonna work like but then, like you said, people are saying it was good enough for the front row, but was there not like zero, like point zero five something between Max and Lando? Or it was like, it wasn't a huge yeah. margin. It's like for him to slot in that margin, weirdly. And you looked at the track, it was still quite, like, it was still drying up. So it wasn't optimal track, yeah. like, track uh, conditions as well when it was out. I feel like it was more calculated. I think Nick might have only been told on was it Monday or Tuesday? Monday, mm. Tuesday, whatever I think day it was. They announced so it might have been Tuesday, Tuesday but yeah, but not. Uh, it was Tuesday, wasn't it? I think he might have been told the same day, but I don't think he got told like 
an hour because they also say this is just rumors but they also yeah. say that <laughs> Red Bull didn't want to announce it until later in the week they wanted to to wait till later in the week but next team just basically went and oh yeah I have seen the that the Dutch media about it um and then they kind of had no choice but to but to announce it but then I was thinking mm. why would he why would next team go and tell the media and want the news out now like surely he would want to sit with the decision because it's obviously quite fresh mm. to sit with what's happened process it before he has every voice in the planet like and his ear basically if that makes sense yeah I don't think so. also yeah like, but... <laughs> it's crazy I feel that just in general about them replacing him that in my mind maybe it was because we're so focused on Red Bull but the gap between Verstappen and Perez in my mind is bigger than the gap between Yuki and Nick I don't know why For but sure. I just I feel like maybe because we're just so focused on Red Bull and everything that's been happening happening in quality but I feel like doing that badly in a really good car is worse than doing badly in a rubbish car. It's because that's the point of being in the rubbish car. Uh So you're going to miss out on a point on a good day or like 12th place or something. But that's very different to missing out on wins and podiums. And And the thing is, it, it feels like they sacked the wrong driver, but I completely get why they've done it because they're doing it very slowly to get to Perez. I think I feel that's what I feel like is happening, but obviously they can't just go. Yep, yeah, Ricardo's placing replacing Perez straight away. There will be an absolute uproar. So I can see they're doing it tactically, and they've gone. We're not happy with Perez because there's no way Corner and Marco are going. Yeah, he just needs a bit of time. It'll be okay. I'm like, there's no way they'd say that. They've got something in their minds yeah. going. Right, we need to fix this situation with our second driver again for like the third year running. So let's bring Ricardo back up. But they're they're waiting to do that. They can't really replace Yuki. So they've just gone in through Nick, which uh-huh. yeah. I don't I I don't know whether he'd know that. Or this is this is all just like what I'm <laughs> this is all just what I feel like is happening. <laughs> the vibe I'm getting. It might be completely different and they're like, no, Paris is staying for five more seasons. But yeah, it's it's a whole mess at Red Bull but it's interesting I'm excited to watch Drive to Survive and see what everyone says when they get <laughs> they'll hungry. have it all this because... is like a good deck for the episodes for them yeah <laughs> this is brilliant yeah it makes it I think they know maybe they know how bored people are getting with Max dominating and they're like oh let's do something interesting for a little bit <laughs> so that <laughs> yeah so that fans are excited again but yeah it, at least it gives us something to talk about I know, I mean, whole podcast episodes came yeah. from it, so I've <laughs> got so, it. But I, I genuinely think this is like the soft launch of Checo because, like, obviously Daniel's not had a like a great couple of years. Like, he's obviously had his win, which was huge, but, like, mm-hmm. aside from that, he's not had an incredible, like, season. And, of course, Red Bull are still very, like, passionate of the fact that he is still a very, very good driver and... But there'll also be a part of them that's like, right, okay, we can say this, but like we need to prove it, sort of thing. And I think yeah. Checo's now not performing, and it would be like a huge, huge, huge risk because Checo has been such a good second driver that it's like it would be a huge risk to just put Daniel in the seat and take Checo out when Daniel hasn't had the best performance. He he got sacked from his team in the nicest way. He's not yeah. had a great performance. And you can't just put him into the championship winning team like straight away. I think this is that Daniel, you find your feet. The cars had the same engine sort of thing. Like mm. it's gonna be I guess similar to drive, not at all, but like you get what I mean. He didn't like the McLaren and the McLaren just didn't suit him. Whatever it is, the Red Bulls will be more similar. And then I think it's if you're doing well, then it's less of a risk for us to go right key check sorry we'll pay you off yeah off you trot Daniel you're back yeah. in the seat sort of thing yeah I always thought they couldn't replace drivers I was so convinced that it was just you're in for a season that's it but the amount of swapping they do and paying drivers out is just crazy because of how competitive it's getting but I'm very excited for Hungary I feel like it hasn't settled in that we're actually going to be seeing Daniel Ricciardo back in a car like know, even though it's I'm only so been I'm glad I'm going I'm like oh my god I know I'm like oh I missed it by <laughs> <a> one <week. laughs> but I know 
who did it? He would have got more publicity in Silverstone. Hungary at the Hungarian Grand Prix, you know that the press officers at the track are like, guys, this is the biggest thing because more people are going to tune in. More people yeah. are going to be more focused on Hungary. So it's like, they'll put, this is the best thing that's ever happened is. Yeah, but I'm I'm very excited to see what happens next week and also going to keep an eye out on all of Nick's socials because I would I want to know where that goes and hope that he's okay because it's a big hit yeah, to like okay. essentially get your dream given to you and then go actually no um uh-huh it's going to affect him hugely in terms of like his mental health and I think hopefully people aren't going to overshadow that as well with everything else if that makes sense and really make sure that he's got the support that he needs yeah um well that's all we've got time for basically the whole red bull saga i bet by my next week something will come out and they'll say some more things marco will be back at it saying something but marco flipped a coin and made another decision yeah (laughs) yeah um but i hope you guys enjoyed the podcast let us know what you think about this whole situation and i don't think anyone could predict the driver lineups for next year the only one driver they've got is Max. That that's the only one I can say in Red Bull. <laughs> he might not even be there to stay. He'll get too <laughs> bored and he'll be off somewhere else. <laughs> yeah. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. But we will see you very soon. Um, hopefully with a bit more idea of what's going on. Um, but yeah, we will see you later.